Hey, what's happening out there, guys? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review, and today I'm trying to be the 100th video you've seen today about PlayStation VR. So I'm sure that most of us know what the big news was today, and that was that Sony finally announced what the price of their upcoming PlayStation VR is going to be, and it's probably a little bit more than I think a lot of us were expecting. They've kind of been teasing that this announcement and reveal of the price and release date was going to be coming pretty soon. It turns out that PlayStation VR is going to cost in the U.S. $399. So yes, $400, which is a lot of money. Now, it's not an insane amount of money. And so what I'm going to try to do with this quick video and share my thoughts about this is try not to be completely negative and totally destroy the thing because that's just kind of the easy thing to do. And I think a lot of people are doing that. And I don't even think that's necessarily wrong because I do think $399 is quite a bit of money, more than it probably should be. Um, but I want to try to come at this, you know, from kind of both angles as I typically tend to do and sort of kind of have a calm, cool head about the whole thing. So $399 for PlayStation VR. And we all know that the Oculus Rift was announced to be $599 a couple of months ago. But of course, that also includes the price for many people of an adequate PC gaming rig. And of course, that ranges in price from probably around $900 or $1,000 to much, much higher, $2,000, $2,500, depending on what you either already have or what you would actually want to be able to afford to run the Oculus Rift. So that kind of has a couple of different things going on there. Um, PlayStation VR was something that a lot of people, myself included, was hoping was going to be a little bit more competitively priced. And it is a little competitively priced at 400 bucks for sure, but even more so, I think that's what we were looking for because it's the console VR, it's the easy VR, it's the stuff that, you know, hey, you already have your PlayStation 4, you might have had it for a few years, now you just spend this, you know, small amount of money, hopefully, and a reasonable investment, you take this VR helmet headset home and whatever else comes with it, you just plug the sucker into your console, and you're good to go. And it's emulating what the Oculus Rift VR experience is without having to have a really expensive gaming PC, you instead have a three or $400 PlayStation 4. And that sound, sounded great, you know, to a lot of us when we thought about what the idea of VR could actually be. Um, I'm somebody who really isn't super excited for VR, but I'm all about giving it a shot. I'm certainly curious. I think it's we're in this weird sort of interesting time with VR where I think gaming feels stale for a lot of people, not just the gamers, but even the companies and the console manufacturers. I think it feels stale. We're not sure where it's going. And everyone's trying to sort of, I think, falsify or kind of fabricate this big next thing out of VR. Everyone's like, we got to make a big next thing you know we had the motion thing and that came and went and you know graphics aren't really blowing people away like we'd hope and that doesn't really get the job done like it did 10 years ago we got to make a new thing and vr seems to be the thing that you know a lot of players in the industry have gravitated towards and understandably so because it is certainly a cool neat thing that the majority of people have never experienced and that's part of the reason why even though i don't really care about vr either way i do want to give it a shot and i would definitely go into it with i want to say open enough of a mind to let my mind be blown, you know, you could say to say, hey, like, I don't really think VR is really all that, but yeah, let me go, let me put this thing on my head and see what it's like, and maybe it would, like, totally impress me, and I'd be like, holy shit, this is crazy, this is great, I was wrong, this is amazing, it is the next thing, and I'm gonna go buy five of these and tell all my friends to buy it. You know, that's kind of where I'm at as far as VR, and what I liked about the concept of PlayStation VR, even though I didn't, like, really, really care about it, was the idea that it might be affordable enough and small enough of a barrier of entry, both in terms of difficulty, um, by only having a P PlayStation 4, you just plug the thing into and go, and also in terms of price, I was hoping to have enough of a reason to maybe give it a shot and say, hey, I'd be willing to give this, you know, like a little small side peripheral for the occasional party or to show off to my friends or to try for a couple of minutes at a time here and there, because it was really obvious to me, like it is to, I think, even a lot of people, that VR probably doesn't have a real hardcore gaming kind of application. And when I say hardcore gaming, I mean stuff like, like a Skyrim or a Grand Theft Auto or a Metroid or a Halo, you know, Legend of Zelda, things like that. Like, I don't know if any of us can envision playing the next Halo or the next Zelda with a VR helmet on our head for three or four hours at a time, depending on how long you game for. That just seems super cumbersome and not feasible. So anyway, I'm going to filter this back down to my main point, which is the price of the PlayStation VR at $400. Now, here's the kind of tricky thing about it is apparently it won't even work without the PlayStation Eye camera, which is another $60. So for some reason, they're not bundling at that in, probably because some people may already have one. So I guess that makes sense. So whereas it seems like $400 is the price, it's actually $460 because you need to pay $60 to have this PlayStation Eye camera. So it's a $460 investment. 
Now, I was sharing the opinion that a lot of people were, and this includes even Rich of Review Tech USA, someone who I like, made a great video about the PlayStation VR just like a day ago, and said that what Sony really needed to do was shoot for $300 or less to stay competitive appropriately with the Oculus Rift, because it had recently come out that the PlayStation VR, you know, this was stated by Sony, is not going to be able to compete in terms of specs with stuff like the HTC, HTC Vive or Vive, I think it may be pronounced, you know, Vive or Vive, in the Oculus Rift, it was going to be, you know, a much lower end, lower quality kind of thing because it doesn't have the ability to run on a two or three thousand dollar PC. So it's like, okay, it's not going to be able to accomplish the same sort of things like visually and technologically as the Oculus Rift and other PC related VR. So, you know, three hundred dollars or less, even though three hundred dollars is more than I'd want to pay. That still would be a pretty good, you know, number to shoot for. 300 or less seems like appropriate console VR that a lot of people would buy into. $460 now the price with the PlayStation Eye. That's a lot of money. It's borderline too much money, but it's, again, not super, super insane. So what I'm trying to analyze here is if this $460 price compared to the $599 Oculus Rift is, is will this be successful for Sony basically is $400 460 with the camera enough to be successful for Sony and for PlayStation VR so I'm gonna break this into two categories to me success is more than just success I think that it's if you look at one category for what I'm calling success it's going to be just the sales just the hardcore sale numbers what are the numbers what are the amount of units sold what is the amount of money that it's brought into Sony and then it's also going to be how it's received I think those are two different aspects to look at PlayStation VR success or any of these upcoming VR units as their success Sony's is a unique one because it's the only console one it's for the number one selling console on the market and it's it, it is the cheapest price available it is definitely the lowest cost even though 460 bucks is a lot of money and again too much money it is the lowest price um, and what I'm doing is I don't want to consider like okay oculus rift is 15 or two thousand dollars because you have to have a PC gaming rig um, I don't really want to do that because then you get into the whole the PlayStation 4 price would actually be like 800 or 900 dollars if you had to buy a PlayStation 4 and buy the PlayStation VR and buy a camera that just kind of gets a little bit stickier, and I think that most people who would buy PlayStation VR are going to be people who already have a PlayStation 4, so they don't have that extra three or $400 buy-in price to consider. We're looking at people who would more than likely only be paying the $400 to get in. So Oculus, I have the same sort of approach. It's really $600. It's not $2,000 or $1,500. So ultimately here, will PlayStation VR be successful at this price? I think in terms of, here's where I think I'm going to throw people off. In terms of sales and, you know, profitability or just the amount of money it brings into Sony, I'm going to say actually, yes, I think it might be. I think that what we might be looking at with the PlayStation VR at the price that it was announced today, as expensive as it is, I think we're looking at a Kinect scenario for what Microsoft had for the original Kinect. We all know the Kinect was a total dud. It was something that, you know, seemed exciting. We all tried it initially and was like, wow, this is actually cooler than I thought. And then it turned out to be a big waste of time for gaming, for real games and for, I don't want to say real gamers, but gamers who game as often as you and I do. It seemed cool, turned out to not be. However, it did sell extremely well. I think they sold between 8 and 10 million Kinects in the last couple of years of the 360's life. And that's a lot of money. Those things were selling for 150 bucks. That was pretty appropriate for the technology at the time. And no one ended up liking it and it didn't last long term, but you know, eight or 10 million units, it actually really was successful on paper and successful dollar wise. So I think that the PlayStation VR is going to literally be the exact same thing. I do think that right out of the gate, PlayStation VR is probably going to be enticing to enough of the 35, 40 million PS4 owners to go out and pick one up. I really do. Even at $400, I think a lot of people are going to be willing to give it a shot. A couple of million right out of the gate. And I think for the first couple of months, six months, maybe a year, but probably more the six or eight month time, I think it's going to sell really, really well as we're waiting to see what this thing can do and if developers are going to deliver on the promise of all these games that they're developing. So I think it's going to do really well there. But also, just like the Connect, I think that the success in terms of critical success and what the gamer reception is once it's been out and people have been trying it for a while is also going to be quite negative. So I don't think it'll be successive in that respect. Um, it's, I think it's literally connect to, I guess not 2.0, connect 3.0, um, since this is Sony's, you know, attempt here. And I think it is going to sell pretty well out of the gate. I think it's going to make a decent amount of money. 
And I think that after a time, people are going to realize it's not really that awesome. It's not going to be worth their time. Maybe the Oculus Rift turns out to be so quality that that does so well that it really shows people, man, why am I going to spend $400 on this crappy PlayStation VR that's like lame-ass quality when I could spend a couple hundred bucks more and get the Oculus Rift, which apparently is freaking awesome and has graphics that are that much better and can do all these other things that PlayStation VR can't. I really think we might be running into a couple of different walls for Sony to see success with this thing, and it's too bad. It's too bad because even though I don't really care about this, I like Sony enough and I really enjoy my PlayStation 4 that I don't want to see them totally shit the bed and lose a bunch of money. You know, they're already a struggling company financially. I'd like to see this do okay. And and even beyond that, you know, I mean, I am a, a kid just like many people who grew up in the 80s when VR was like the promise of the future and was like the coolest shit we could possibly imagine. So I have to also say that the 10-year-old version of myself wants VR to actually turn out to be really freaking cool. I'd love it if it turns out that it's totally badass. It does make gaming better. It's something that we all want to have and try, and it's worth our money to buy in and actually purchase and start doing and using in the future. I would love to really just be wrong and, and learn that it's actually fucking awesome. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I would like to see Sony not have to have a huge failure on their hands, and I would like VR to turn out to be awesome. So, you know, long story, not very short. I do think that the PlayStation VR, even at this too high of a price will probably initially get enough people excited and the early adopters are probably high enough in number that a lot of people are going to buy it right out of the gate and i think that at 400 dollars, a couple of million people are going to buy it in the first couple of months maybe even more and it's going to seem like hey this might actually be pretty cool and it's doing pretty well for sony they're not losing money but give it six months to a year down the road and i'm willing to bet that people are going to have learned that well vr isn't as cool as i thought it's only cool for a couple of minutes you show it to everyone you know the first time they come over to check it out and then it's done. You got nothing else to do with it. No one's going to be playing Skyrim or Zelda or even Mario with this thing. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do. And don't even get me started on the Star Wars game that they announced. I'll talk about that in a different video because I do have thoughts about that freaking thing. But when it comes to PlayStation VR, I think it's going to sell a lot out of the gate. And then it's going to probably fizzle off after time. And what the whole VR market does, I'm not quite sure. We'll have to wait and see. But those are my thoughts on Sony PlayStation VR and its announced price today of 400 to technically 460 bucks. So what do you guys think? Does this all make sense? Do you agree with my assessment that it's going to kind of be like what the Kinect was and maybe make a lot of money, but long term not last very long? Or do you think that it's going to just be freaking awesome right out of the gate? It's going to sell like crazy and everyone's going to love it and gaming is going to change forever because VR is going to be the wave of the future. You guys tell me what you think. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule to Review, and I'll catch you guys next time on another video.